You're watching Inside iOS Dev, your favorite show about real-world iOS development. Quite often in your application, app delegate becomes this um, bloated, massive app delegate with growing number of responsibilities where it sets up a co core data database. It does migrations or initiates them. It sets up the keyboard or ad and other services, analytics. It then responds to application coming to foreground and doing action steps such as tracking events or launching some background jobs and things like that. So it, essentially, the single responsibility of the app delegate easily and quite often is broken, right? And it, it becomes a massive app delegate and grows out of proportion. So this, what you're looking at right now is a, an example of open source production iOS code base where that's the case. So for example, in this, it's LO application. I think it's a social media app. As you see in the it's app delegate in the did finish launching, for example, there's a bunch of setup methods going on for tracking, for keyboard, for different various services, fonts, and so on. So this is uh, already, again, right? The single responsibility is broken. Why the app delegates doing all of this? On top of it, this is difficult, if not impossible, to, to test because lots of those things are either singletons or very tightly coupled within that app delegate. So all of that makes it very, very much difficult to work with, read, and ex expand. So what... There is a solution for this, and we can apply design pattern techniques uh, to help with it. And one of them is a mediator design pattern. We will be showing, we initially thought of showing this, refactoring this code base that you see right now, but we realized that's gonna take, uh, the episode's gonna be hours long. So instead we have a simplified example that we prepared, which hopefully drives the same point, representing an overloaded, app delegate that breaks single responsibility principle. So you see here, you see we only have three methods that we implemented, did finish launching, uh, did enter background and did become active, but all of them have various services and singletons that they call, such as like analytic events, Facebook, SDK manager, and so on. So this is what we're gonna be refactoring today in, into a mediator to in use mediator design pattern here to, to make it less massive and bloated. So the mediator pattern is typically an object that encapsulates how a set of objects interact. There are various ways of implementing it. And in this particular case, we would want to, we would want to broadcast down, broadcast the events that happen in app delegate such as application finishing launching or entering background or become an active and so on. Essentially respective mapping them to the methods, lifecycle methods that the app delegate has. And then in turn, the mediator will delegate down to each individual object that we see here, such as analytics service or Facebook manager, or progress hard and so on to do the respective action that they need to be doing upon application launching or again, enter in foreground or become an active, et cetera, right? Based on the event that happened. Okay, guys. So the implementation of this app delegate mediator is gonna look uh, something like this, where it's, a, it's just an object. It has a collection of listeners, app delegate listeners. And then every time when an event happens, and in our case, we have the events would be the application finishing launching or application entering background or application becoming active. When those events happen, they will fire and we have an enum that's almost mimics the, the signature of those methods. If you need to pass those params, right, for some of the some of these services, it might be important to get one of those params or launch, and, uh, launch options. So we mimicking it here with those in those cases as attributes, params for each case. And then when the events happen, we just simply propagate them down and we let, let the, all of the listeners know. And the way those listeners work, we have this generic 
app delegate listener interface. It doesn't have any methods, but then we have specific listeners, right? Anyone who wants to listen and know about did finish launching events will have conformed to this protocol and will have be forced to implement this. And therefore we can launch that method on it. Anyone who uh, respectively wants to know about app entering into background, same thing, right? This is it's, it's the protocol. This is the method they'll have to implement. And when the event happens, they get notified. And then the same for did become active. And now we will actually initialize our uh, mediator that we created and uh, use it here in the app delegate to wire up and connect all of the events coming from the application lifecycle to it. Uh, so we'll start with uh, initializing the mediator and then we store it in the property here in the app delegate and uh, every time when events happen events that we care about and want the mediator to broadcast to uh, listeners right in this case again right our three uh, methods we will tell the mediator to notify with a specific enum so yeah and then in this case as you see we'll be notifying what did finish launching case and then we pass the params that that we get from the actual app delegate, right? And then in case of did enter background, it's just the case itself with no params and the same goes for the did become active. So now, as I was saying before, every time when this happens, right? And that will happen accordingly when the lifecycle events execute. And we actually want to place this event calling at the very top of the method. So it have the this is the first thing that uh, happens, right? Uh, I mean, here and there did finish launch and it's not really possible, but you want to place this initialization of the mediator and then fire in the notification as soon as possible. But then in every other method, definitely place it at the top or again, as high as you can. And then when that happens, right? Again, to reiterate uh, notification fires, and then the method's called, and then notification is fired to all of the listeners that care about it. But in order, so for us to continue with our refactoring, what we're going to do, like, if you, if you look at this, what we, what we have, right? We have all of these objects that care about those events, right? But how do they get the notification? So what they need to, they need to subscribe and become listeners of that mediator and, and listen to the specific event, events. So here, now we want to have our services over here. Uh, we, don't want, we don't want them to be in, in here in this app delegate and app delegate to call them directly. We will want the mediator to notify them about these events that they care about. So let's start with the Facebook manager. This one specifically cares about all three events, but the main thing to start with, we need to make it one of the listeners, right? So we can just extract it into a variable. So yeah, and we extract it into a variable and then we, we try to make it a, one of our listeners, right? So this doesn't, uh, does not compile because as of right now, it, uh, it does not conform to the protocols, right? So every listener is supposed to conform to that generic protocol. So let's start with implementing that. Okay, so the first thing we do in our Facebook manager, we implement that first protocol, right? So we know that it cares about application finishing launching with options. So that's the interface we make it conform to. And now, this should compile, right? It takes it because that interface is a subclass of the generic interface. But what we now want to do, we every like every time the app was finishing launching, the Facebook manager was calling, the setup method was called on it. So now we want the Facebook manager itself called whatever needs to happen, in this case, setup when the application finishes launching. So we can you know, move it out of here. Now, when the app starts, this notification mediator will get that event and then broadcast it down to everybody and every listener. And in this case, Facebook manager is one of the listeners and it will launch the setup. 
and we but these methods notifications about did enter background or become active will not be broadcasted to the facebook manager because the mediator has a logic here to only send it to send events and their respective methods only to listeners that conform to that specific protocol. So if we want any Facebook manager or any other object to receive other notifications, we have to conform them to the rest of the protocols or to the protocols we care about. So let's do that. All right, so now we make made the Facebook manager conform to the rest of the protocols. So now they, it has to implement the respective methods. And you see, we placed everything that was in the app delegate called on the Facebook manager in those respective methods. We, we placed it in the, in the right place. And now the Facebook manager itself figures out what, what does need to happen when app becomes active or enters background and so on. And now we can do the same for analytics. As you can see, uh, the analytics need the service needs to receive events about the, also the same three the same three events just like Facebook Manager about finishing launching or entering background or becoming active. So which means that it also needs to conform to all of those protocols in order to receive uh, those notifications. So let's do that. So yeah, and here we created the instance of this analytics service. We uh, make it one of the listeners so that when uh, mediator fires notifications, it will receive it. And then in order to actually get it, we have to conform it to those three protocols and it does the respective action, whatever it needs to do there, such as send events in this case. And then we can comment it out and, or remove it from, from the app delegate, right? Because it doesn't need to control analytics service anymore. So now the last one is the progress HUD, but the problem with this service is that it's actually a singleton. It's a static singleton where it's a bunch of class methods. So we can't really make it, we, we can make it conform to, to the protocols we want, but it's not really going to help, right? Because there is no instance of the subject to, to inject, right? So what do we inject as a listener over here? So to work around that, like in our case, it's obviously overly simplified example, right? There's nothing in there, but it it's quite common with lots of libraries and even with Apple's code to provide something inflexible like this and essentially singleton with a set of static methods. So in order to work around that, we have to create a wrapper uh, around this that mimics the API of this and has the same set of methods with the same signature but instance methods, not static or class methods. And then when it's called, you see we have one over here. And when the, those methods on the object are called, it will call the respective whatever needs to be called on, in the underlining wrapped singleton instance. That's how you essentially uh, work around that problem. And then now the same logic, right? So we want this progress HUD or a wrapper for it. We want to have an instance of that. And then the instance of that object is going to be one of the listeners. But in our case, we only use progress HUD in did finish launching with options. We don't want to use it in other app delegate lifecycle events. So we don't need, we only need it to conform, need to conform it to one protocol, the one to listen for did finish launching with options events, but not uh, for the rest. So as you can see here, we only conformed it to one and we had to implement only that one method for it. And then the same thing, we call whatever the need, needs to be called there when the application starts. And that's again, mimics this, so we don't need this anymore. So yeah, as you can see guys now, after cleaning it up, I removed all the commented out code, right? This is much cleaner. And at the end of the day, of course, the application did finish launching with options will be a little bit bigger. Uh, than other methods because it's set setup method. But otherwise, normally each one of those methods in the app delegate with app delegate mediator pattern becomes just one liner or delegating to the mediator to notify whoever is interested in this particular event. And the mediator uh, will figure it out. And then the only thing we have to do now is to register the objects that 
would like to know or be notified about. Okay, so one more thing to, to address here is in the implementation of App Delegate Mediator. As you saw before, right, it has the list of listeners and it notifies the listeners that conform to a specific protocol every time it receives those events, right? It notifies them of the respective events. Okay, so one more thing to address here. You may you might have noticed that we have this unique listeners over here. So this is a safeguard. This is actually from our production code base. So this is a safeguard just in case if listeners are, you pass the same object in the listeners array multiple times. So if there is a duplicate, we don't want to fire the did finish launching or any other one of the events twice or multiple times to the object. So we, we kind of filter it out here. And one more thing, one more important thing with this pattern or this particular implementation of this pattern, the you should pay attention to the order of the listeners that you pass in here in this array, because since internally it's an array, it's ordered, right? So wh whichever object goes first will receive the notification first. It probably, in ideal world, it shouldn't matter to you which one of those was executed first in your app delegate implementation or the app delegate mediator broadcast in it. But if it does matter and it's important for, I don't know, some sort of a service be initialized first and only then the, the progress hard or whatnot. So keep that in mind and, you know, inject them accordingly. And uh, this code base, we will actually upload it to GitHub. You can check it out there on our inside iOS dev GitHub. And you can play around with the code or use it in your own application. But that's it for today. Uh, we'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you never miss the show.